Okay, so I added a bonus session. And the reason for it is that I think that if you've done all of these things here and you've got everything to work and so on, that is great. Then you've got something that is looking really realistic and we have all the keys to do whatever we want. However, what I didn't mention is that you can go, of course, one step further and I normally do that. So I was just like to amplify that or describe that for you. So if we select this uh, metal here, you have this blue color. And you can, of course, change that to every color you want to. So as I said before, we can do this so it's like red or something like that. But the reason that we have this like input here is also that we can add a random amount of colors. So uh, in most cases, to make like that extra step to make something really, really realistic, then you do slight changes of those colors because we can, uh, you can see where, where we should have the edges for the dust, uh, for, for, for rust and so on. And we also add some noise into that. But the environment also do a lot of other stuff. You have the sun that is uh, shining through and it might stand a tree uh, where you have a lot of leaves above that gives, uh, different kinds of sun on, on uh, this lantern and you don't move it for a long time. Then some places will get paler, another one will will have a more uh, color and so on. And of course we take care of that in small amounts in, in the dust and dirt and so on. But you can add it uh, in the way that you add color just as a mix here. And you can do that for all the stuff here. So you have like dust color. It doesn't have to be exactly the same type of dust color all the way around uh, with the few the same thing. So don't be afraid to add a little bit of random into these things here. So it could look like this, that if you have like a, I don't know, like a blue lantern that we had from the beginning. So we put that to some value here, um, make it more blue. Uh, so we have something like this. Uh, now this is more blue than we had, but that doesn't matter. Uh, then we can add some noise into this. So shift A texture and then you add like a noise texture and then you can add a clamp value so, or clamp, not color ramp. So shift A converter and a color ramp here. And by that, just put that in and that to one of those color and suddenly you can control it using this here. So now you can say that, okay, it should be almost the same as this. So I go here and pick that color and that one will be a lot darker. So I put that to something like this. Uh, so we have those two. And then we just control it with the scale and the detail and the roughness here. And we can move uh, these things here to, to make uh, it visible that that we have different types of color here. Now you can see that we have a lot of small uh, different, uh, so this part here is much bluer than this part here and so on. But it doesn't have to be that much. You, you can decide if you want to make it really, really soft or if you want it to, to be visible. And if you do it soft like this, you hardly notice it, but it's like I think I described before, it's a feeling that if you see it, then you might not know that or fee see that this part is a little bit bluer than this, uh, than this part here, but you feel it. It feels more real because you have these type of variations. So don't be afraid to use a random outside uh, when you have created all of this, because if you have put in hours and hours of work here, then these extra minutes will do so much to make everything look even nicer. And especially, uh, especially with what we had with this glass here. So if I go to the glass and I set this value to something, so we get some dirt in here, then this part here, of course, should have different type of color as we did, but also all the other parts here should have different types of colors. So uh, that is also why I added uh, this here to, to make the, the changes instead of using uh, a simple color in. 
but that is also something that you can of course uh, change as you want to so you don't have to have these values you can change them as well or add uh, some add random between here so you can add like a mix rgb that really add random into it because these parts here they are like building of some information that we created before i think we use this part here for instance to to create these long lines and then they follow this rule that we have here so it doesn't it doesn't get random here it doesn't it it's more like we will get uh, white here then it will get uh, more like uh, dark or, so, uh, or yellow and then we get some darker tones here so it, it follows a pattern that is not random so that it's good to just add a mix rgb into this add a noise add some color ramp and put that in to make uh, it even more mixed and to make it even more random and to that make it even more realistic so uh, that is one thing to, to think about. Always add random things into it. And then uh, we also have this, I don't know why, but <laughs> almost every place where I look for reference images, they are paint on these as well. It, not just this paint, it's like uh, they have uh, dropped paint on them. So uh, think of those things as well. You can add, since you have only all so nice, things out here you can easily do uh, like a new uh, mask that you make almost black and only have like two or three uh, for different white spots that you then uh, can paint white and do a new mix shader put that in and then you have paint above everything as well so this session was more about describing how to think to move the all the logic realistic thing so it puts in also the natural realistic thing the, the thing that comes from random things happen in the environment uh, around this so that is what i would like to mention and now i mentioned it so now i promise this will be the absolutely last session in this series okay bye see you perhaps later